It's the Wednesday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. 19th day of July and the 20th day of July tomorrow promises to be an interesting day across the valley. We have an elevated severe weather risk, uh, one of our first decent severe weather risks really in a few months. We got missed by some storms a, a few days ago, uh, but that may not be the case as we go into the day on Thursday. We'll talk all about it in this video. Today though, what a nice day. The dew points came down as promised. Uh, the front sagged and stalled just to our south, closer to Interstate 70. And so we've enjoyed dew points mostly in the 50s, which is a nice treat for this time of the year. Also, a fair amount of sunshine. Just wanted to take a quick look outside in Boardman. We're looking east towards Poland here. And yeah, what a nice summer evening it is with those dew points in the 50s and air temperatures in the upper 70s to around 80. You know, there's been a lack of activity over Lake Erie of late. Lack of storms, lack of wind, and so the lake is pretty calm and clear. A lot of times you see it looking kind of cloudy or a lot of sediment being stirred up over Lake Erie. Lake Erie is a pretty shallow lake, so it doesn't take much for a lot of sediment to get pulled up to the surface and make for kind of a, a cloudy appearance on the satellite picture. But uh, today's high-resolution MODIS shot shows a pretty calm and clear Lake Erie. This is just about as clear as Lake Erie gets, and I suspect it's going to look a lot different about two days from now after some thunderstorms roll through. Uh, tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Yeah, it's been such a quiet stretch of weather when it comes to severe weather over the last few months, kind of the heart of our severe weather season from late April through early July. Not a single severe thunderstorm warning in most of our area. Northwestern Trumbull got clipped and we just missed out on a brief tornado warning last weekend on Saturday, I believe, uh, in southern Ashtabula County. But for the most part, our entire television viewing area has been th severe thunderstorm and tornado warning free now for the last few months. Remember those back-to-back -back on uh, Saturdays, uh, wind episodes we had at the end of March and on April 1st. That's the last time we've had any sort of widespread severe weather, impactful severe weather in our television viewing area. But again, this can change tomorrow. Pretty good setup coming our way tomorrow. And uh, today with the Midday Outlook, the Storm Prediction Center did pretty much put uh, all of Ohio and a good chunk of Western Pennsylvania and Southwest New York in the slight risk, level two out of level five for severe weather. I would not be surprised if with the overnight update tonight when this becomes the day one outlook, maybe there's an enhanced risk uh, area that gets cut out in here somewhere, a uh, level higher, maybe Detroit, Cleveland, maybe Columbus, uh, Sandusky, something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't guarantee it. And you know, I'm, I don't work at the Storm Prediction Center, so I, I'm not drawing these maps. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if right in the middle of this slight risk, uh, they want a category higher with the day one outlook. Just a reminder of what these uh, risk categories basically mean, slight risk level two, that's something we see in Eastern Ohio, Western PA on average 20 to 25 times per year. Some years more, some years less. This year it's been a lot less. An enhanced risk level three, that's typically just one, two, three days a year around here as a long-term average. And it's very rare for us to see a moderate or high risk in our part of the region, uh, much more common in Western Ohio into Indiana, places like that, but it's pretty darn rare to see moderate or high risk around here. In fact, we haven't really been under a high risk in a few decades uh, in eastern Ohio and western PA. So all modes of severe weather are on the table late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. This time, this timing, I should say, four to nine, this is one thing we're not super confident about. I'll talk about that momentarily, but just generally speaking, as far as the risks go, uh, wind damage, Large hail. These could be pretty good hail producers uh, tomorrow afternoon, especially. Uh, and then isolated tornado risk, you bet. Uh, that's something that can't be taken off the table at this point. Not listed here, but will be a possibility, of course, torrential downpours. Now, I don't think this will be a huge flash flooding concern for our area because of the relatively fast forward motion of the storm. So it's a good day to make sure you have a plan. Uh, we haven't had to practice a plan, uh, implement a plan, hardly at all in the last few months, of course. Uh, we want you to have multiple and redundant ways of getting warnings. Um, the Storm Tracker 21 app, of course. Make sure you have it set up to alert you. Make sure your mobile devices are not on silent and do not disturb and things like that uh, so that you will be alerted uh, when warnings are issued. Uh, NOAA Weather Radio, I know the in our part of the country, a NOAA weather radio is something most people don't have. It's much more common in tornado hotbeds like Alabama, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Kansas, places like that. But you can get these at your local Walmart. You can buy them online. They're real simple and easy to program and set up, and they're extremely reliable. Uh, we like to think of a NOAA weather radio as 
like a smoke detector for severe weather. Doesn't need an internet connection. Uh, it uh, can run on batteries if the power goes out. And the instant warnings are issued. I mean, the instant warnings are issued by the National Weather Service. Uh, that thing will go off and you can't miss it. All right, so let's time this out and talk about some of the forecast challenges. Uh, as we go into Thursday, a warm front will slide through right around midday. Now, as early as mid-afternoon, we could see thunderstorms firing up along this warm front. And I would be concerned if this were to happen that there would be a decent potential for some rotation in storms right around this time frame. A lot of times, you know, there's an old saying uh, in, the, in the weather business, don't trust a warm front. Uh, in the winter, that can mean more snow than you would expect or different types of precipitation than you might have expected. A warm front in this kind of setup is uh, a boundary that a lot of times storms, if they fire up and ride along that boundary, they like to rotate. You get veering of the wind uh, with height a lot of times. Uh, with southeasterly winds near the surface, westerly winds aloft, that creates wind shear and turning in the atmosphere, and then an updraft can turn that or make that uh, rotation more vertical rather than horizontal, and then you're off to the races sometimes. Um, so I would be concerned if we do see initiation this early in the day, 2, 3 p.m., that this initial round could have some spinners, and maybe uh, e even if we don't have any uh, you know, rotating wall clouds or anything like that, um, I would be concerned about ha some hail and, and storms that manage to fire up at this time of the day. But it's not a given that this is going to happen. The atmosphere might remain relatively capped, and some cloud cover might filter in ahead of these that would limit the instability somewhat. Uh, and if the cap does not get broken at this point, there's a chance we just stay dry through most of the afternoon and waits till the evening and the approach of the cold front before things get going. So this is just one model solution I'm showing you right here. It's a legitimate solution. I wouldn't discount it at all, but it's not a given that it's going to transpire just like this. Either way, the cold front approach is in the evening with uh, at least a chance of scattered showers and storms along and around that front. Uh, this run of the model doesn't have much beyond that initial batch, but again, we're not going to take this verbatim. Uh, we're just going to you know, use it as a guide for general ideas. I think we'll be in the clear either way by late evening, 10, 11 o'clock or so. At that point, we should be able to give you the all clear no matter what happened earlier in the day. And then as we go into the day on Friday, the day could start with some clouds and maybe a shower or a sprinkle. I think the afternoon will be brighter on Friday. It'll be cooler, it'll be less humid, very nice Friday evening. Nice weekend in store for the area as well with some sunshine. I mentioned uh, the, the flash flooding risk being mitigated a little bit by the forward speed of the storms. Um, and so less of the area is covered in the medium risk for flash flooding. That's what this product is. I know the banner didn't show up there, but that's the, uh, the product showing the risk of flash flooding. And they've chopped a little bit of that medium risk out because the storms are going to be moving along at a decent clip. Yes, there will certainly be some torrential downpours in any of the heaviest storms uh, late in the afternoon into the evening tomorrow, but at least they will be moving. Once we get done with that, and once we get done with a pretty nice weekend, actually the story next week will be the warm weather. Now, it's, it's nothing like the west. The low this morning in Phoenix, Arizona was 97. That was the low this morning in Phoenix. Can you imagine waking up at 7 in the morning and stepping outside? It's already 97 degrees. Just remarkable heat. What's going to happen as we go into next week? That heat dome uh, will kind of flatten out and migrate far enough to the east that a little bit of a pattern change will take place uh, during the second half of next week for us. The core of the heat is still out here underneath this ridge of high pressure, but you'll notice we're no longer in a northwesterly flow in the Ohio Valley and into the mid-Atlantic states by the tail end of next week. This will allow some heat to build in. Nothing like they're going to see, you know, out west. We're not going to see mid-90s. We're not going to see 100, anything like that. But I could see where we have a couple or a few days where it gets pretty close to 90 and perhaps even lower 90s towards the second half of next week. Those are numbers that are not anything all that crazy unusual, of course, for the end of July, but it hasn't been a particularly hot summer so far. So it is a little noteworthy if we have a couple of 91 degree days at the end of next week, because we just haven't seen that kind of heat in most spots yet this year. All right, lots to uh, get to, of course, over the next 24 hours. We'll have you covered on all the social medias. By the way, if you're on threads, I don't have an icon for threads yet, uh, blow me, but threads is the new social media platform uh, that Meta, the, the company that uh, does Facebook and Instagram, uh, debuted a couple of weeks ago as a uh, Twitter replacement, basically. 
Uh, I love Twitter, been on Twitter a long time, but Twitter is going down the tubes in a hurry. Um, and I'm relatively optimistic about the future of threads as a, uh, an alternative to Twitter. It needs a lot of work. It still needs a lot of features added to it. Um, but I'm posting content there occasionally on threads, not as much as the other social media outlets because it's a little harder. I can post instantly on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram straight from our weather graphics system. Um, and I can't do that yet uh, on threads. So it's a little bit more cumbersome to get content online, especially if I'm busy with active weather. But again, find me on threads if you are happy if you happen to be there. I'm Eric WFMJ. Make sure you're following me elsewhere. We'll keep you up to date on what to expect on Thursday. We'll do some live streaming coverage as needed uh, across the area uh, Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night.